consciousness actually is unrestricted and unrestricting. So the moment you do bring your attention to, well, oh, I am awareness, then you are engaging consciousness. Consciousness doesn't have confinement or resistance, it just sees. Another part of that, I see that when I'm making a problem out of something, I'm actually using duality and I'm thinking it should be this other way. A good, I, I should be feeling this, a really good, or it should be this situation, it should be better than it really is. So then you get into that duality, but then just bring it back. Mm -hmm, I'm mm -hmm. aware that I'm aware, oh, I see this happening. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, and then it just makes it in the realm of awareness and kind of just spreads out and gives it room and space. Right, yeah. And so, you know, this leads me on to comment again about one of my phrases, tension is inevitable, conflict is optional. So um, I'm going to give you an example again of how people get confused about liberated being or enlightened beings. And I, I commented that there's still flux. So um, in terms of flux, you know, we are influenced by solar activity. Yeah, and, and our whole nervous system is influenced and stimulated by what's going on with solar and magnetic energies in our um, solar system and our Earth field. Well, one of the strongest factors is that when there's a very large solar flare or a sequence of large solar flares, is that it disrupts the uh, endocrine cycles. So it disrupts sleep patterns, it disrupts the nervous system, um, and the symptoms of that are anxiety, what we would call anxiety. Now, last year, we had one of the largest episodes of the largest solar flares and the largest number of solar flares in decades. And I raise this point within programs and retreats and I asked everyone who's experiencing this phenomenon that you seem to not be able to sleep properly, you're waking up two or three o'clock in the morning feeling all you know agitated and you can't put your finger on it what's disturbing you. Like I said to everyone guess what I'm feeling the same. I'm experiencing these symptoms of agitation that you would call anxiety, not as a product of any mental state, but just because this is part of the cosmos. There is flux. So in that, by being that, not imagining I should be something else, it just is that. Okay, so for a while there's this. Then, then that passes. It's funny, we kind of stereotype what an enlightened teacher should actually be feeling. Or we look like. Or, yeah, everything. I'm not Indian with a long <laughs> beard and big <laughs> malas and orange robes. But so I'm even wearing a bit of makeup. You know, we project, <laughs> we, we project that you should be feeling bliss 100% of the time. But he here's the thing. You, your comprehension, your perception of bliss is off track as well. This is bliss. You mean being human and being part of this reality. Right, and not being in resistance to it. Not distorting the perception about it, embracing it, being it, celebrating it. This is what the masters call Leela. It is a play. And to be with this is bliss, the whole damn lot of it. <laughs>